For those of you who say that online dating isn't an organic way of meeting people, you're right, it isn't. <laughs> Liking, good food, sleep, travel, uh, these are not personality traits. All it takes is one person for it to make all of the waiting worth it. Oof, online dating, what a juicy and exciting topic to talk about. Truly one that invites such a mixed bag of responses. Some people are critical of it as a mode of connection, and some people have met their long-term partners through it. As someone who has spent extensive periods of time, collectively I want to say a couple of years online dating, I think online dating should be and can be fun. I also happened to meet two of my past partners through the apps, including someone I was with for nearly two and a half years. So in today's video, I wanted to share some tips either to help you hopefully find the right person or if not, at the very least, enjoy the process as much as possible. Some very quick flash fire tips. First of all, pick the right app. Tinder's for hookups as it is all over the world. Coffee meets bagel I find kind of old-fashioned but I like Hinge and I know most people in my demographic so 20s to mid 30s tend to be on Hinge so that's the app I would recommend. On that note, uh, just pick one app. <laughs> Trust me that's more than enough for you to deal with. And finally, if you are online dating for the first time, it's pretty much guaranteed that you will see someone you know and someone you know will see you. <laughs> I know it's cringy the first few times this happens but get over it okay we are all on the apps trying to find someone it's normal and there is no shame in that okay so let's start out with some mindset tips mindset number one for those of you who say that online dating isn't an organic way of meeting people you're right it isn't <laughs> but the older we get the more fixed our social circles become so online dating is just another way for you to expand that circle a little bit more and meet new people. So for sure, keep going for your social events, keep joining interest groups, keep meeting people in real life, keep asking your friends to intro people to you. But at the end of the day, don't discount online dating as a legitimate form of finding someone compatible as well. Mindset number two, the ideal case scenario is that you walk away with someone on your arm. But even if that doesn't happen, Online dating is a great opportunity for you to develop your social and relational skills. Online dating really helped me to sharpen my focus on what exactly I was looking for in a romantic partner. It also gave me the confidence to essentially meet a stranger and have a conversation with them for a couple of hours. Alongside developing very important essential skills like dealing with rejection and also being the bearer of bad news. These skills will come in handy in other areas of your life as well. So going into online dating with this growth mindset will be helpful and also help you make the most out of the process. Mindset number three, you must start online dating from a place of number one, already being happy by yourself and number two, already being happy with the person that you are and wanting to date someone else who is like you. If you are already fundamentally unhappy with your life or who you are, you should not be trying to find someone else who is going to make you magically happy. Spoiler alert, that's not going to happen. Dating apps are only fun if you're not trying to derive your self-worth from them. And finally, dating app mindset number four, remember that you are the prize. Let's face it, okay, dating apps are superficial. They favour women over men and more conventionally attractive people over the average Janes and Joes. So expect to get many misses, accept that rejection is going to be part of the game, be mindful of these realities and of course remember that dating apps provide other people a very incomplete picture of who you are. So don't take rejection or even a low number of likes personally. Let's talk about making a good profile. This is up there as one of the most important things you can do to set yourself up for success on these apps. Of course, it's not easy to create an authentic, 
and realistic representation of yourself in a limited space. But there are so many people on these apps that generic profiles just pass right by. So let's fix that. Every picture and prompt should showcase a different side of you. It's very much like writing a good university application essay. What are the different aspects of your personality and your lifestyle that you would want a potential future partner to know? Are you adventurous, frugal, someone who enjoys the finer things in life, a goofball, someone who is more on the serious side? If you're able to, to capture what you want to capture and show that on your profile, then you're much more likely to find people who resonate with that. I'm sorry if this is harsh, uh, but liking good food, sleep, travel, especially to Japan or to Bali if you're from Singapore, <laughs> uh, these are not personality traits. When I was using the apps actively, once I saw these tropes, I would immediately swipe left because it made me feel as though the other person wasn't putting in a lot of effort into their profile to be a little bit more different and unique. Some other used cliches that I would encourage you to not put on your profile is that you're looking for your partner in crime, this debate about whether you like pineapples on pizza, your love languages, saying that you will fall for me if I trip you, saying that the best way to ask you out is just to ask you out, and saying that on Sunday you like to have brunch. There is a way to present common traits or likes in a way that is uncommon to convey your personality more. So take these two statements that I came up with. Typical Sunday. Hunting for one-to-one -one discounts for newly opened cafes on Burple whilst trying to max out my credit cards for miles per dollar. Spending too much time in the wine aisle of the grocery store in preparation for my next dinner party. I host one every month. Prompt 1 tells me that you are frugal, you are financially savvy, but you also know how to appreciate good food. You also attract people who know what MPD stands for. Prompt 2 tells me you're kind of bougie because you like wine, but you also have a social life and you treasure your relationships and make an effort to cultivate them. These two prompts involve food, but they're not only about food. They use food as the central theme to tell a story about who you are. And that conveys much more to the other person who's reading your profile than just simply listing a bunch of things that you like to eat. So I'm not using the apps anymore, but I wanted to show my profile just because, well, first of all, I think it incorporates a lot of the tips that I just mentioned, but also because I'm very proud of it, okay? <laughs> so just entertain me. <laughs> so this is my online dating profile. I will put it up either here or here. I set up my profile by putting up a couple of prompts because I feel like, first of all, they all convey different things about me. The first one is really just a way to ask people uh, what are the things that are important to you in a way that is a little bit more creative. Having meaningful conversation is important to me. And I think part of showing that you're a good conversationalist is asking good questions. So that's kind of what I'm trying to convey with prompt number one. My second prompt is essentially about attachment theory. That's a relational concept that I think is fairly popular nowadays. Uh, and the reason why I bring it up is just because I want to show people, you know, I've been in a relationship before, I've done my research on relationships, and I'm not completely new to this. My third prompt is interesting <laughs> because I think it shows people that have a little bit of contrarian views on things. <laughs> But also, one of the first few things that I talk about with my matches is their relationship with their work and what they envision for their career. Is their career the most important thing to them or is it just one of the many priorities that they have? Okay, I'm really psychoanalyzing this, but as you can see, right, we've barely even gone to the first prompt and we really got a lot going on. <laughs> okay, so my first proper prompt. I use the simple pleasures prompt really just to do a listing of the things that I do in my spare time and the stuff that I like. I volunteer at a farm, 
journaling and mindfulness is important to me and I'm vegan so I slip it in there right okay so I have another photo um, of me volunteering at the farm I think I look pretty cute <laughs> and then a video of me dancing so that people know that I do partner Latin dance I know there are some uh, people who aren't okay with that I realized at some point you know looking through my profile that it was a little bit serious and so I decided to put up this video of me <laughs> being late. My friend took a video of this calling me out basically on her Instagram after uh, I was late for like the umpteenth time. <laughs> so I put this video up because first of all I think it's fun to use videos as a little bit of dynamism to your profile. Uh, secondly, I think it, as I said, made the tone a little bit more playful and fun. And thirdly, because I genuinely am late all of the time. <laughs> and so you kind of gotta be okay with that if you want to date me. <laughs> okay, and then, you know, I had the typical I look for. Self-awareness, open-mindedness, intellectual curiosity, good conflict resolution skills, and being vulnerable. And then I have more travel pictures of me in Mexico and Spain. So that's my profile. I mean, I'm no longer currently on the market, but as you can see, I tried to incorporate all of the things that I mentioned earlier. Um, having every picture and prompt show a different side of myself, trying to keep it entertaining, you know, when people read this profile. It needs to be an accurate representation of me, and I genuinely feel that it is. Of course, it takes many iterations. You're not going to do it once and then be done with it. So keep tweaking it here and there as ideas come to you. It's a fun little project almost to try and represent yourself as accurately as possible. For this next section, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about managing burnout on these apps, which is very real. And I'm sure if you spend an extended period of time on the apps, you probably have already experienced it. <laughs> At the root of it, I think dating app fatigue comes from just dating and seeing so many people and not finding anyone who you want to eventually get together with in the long term. So I feel like there are two ways that you can manage this. First of all, manage the volume, so the number of people that you're interacting with. This means, you know, only swiping and matching with the people that you actually want to go on a date with. This means once you start talking to people, to only talk to maximum two to three people at a time. This also means being more judicious with the people that you end up messaging in the longer term. So, you know, don't entertain nowhere conversations. Uh, if the conversation is extremely superficial and not engaging at all, no matter how much you try and make it a little bit more meaningful, then just move on from that person. Uh, similarly, if people ghost you, you know, these people you can kind of let go a little bit faster to focus on the people who there might actually be potential with. The second way to manage dating app fatigue is to learn to manage your expectations uh, and decrease your attachment to people and to outcomes. Uh, okay, so this is harder. <laughs> There is definitely going to be some point in this journey where either you are disappointed because you didn't expect the person to be the way they are or you are disappointed by the lack of interest that they show in you. So disappointment is unfortunately quite unavoidable uh, when you're using the apps because it is very unlikely that you're going to get together with the first person that you talk to. What we can do is that we can try and manage our disappointment and bounce back a little bit faster. How do we do this? That is the harder question. <laughs> uh, I think firstly, at the texting stage, so this is before you meet them, try and strike a balance between being open and vulnerable and also keeping things lighthearted. I used to totally belong to the camp of just you know, no holds barred vulnerability from the get-go um, even before you meet this person which is funny because I think most people deal with the opposite problem which is being too lighthearted and superficial and not knowing how to go deeper but for me, my problem was reverse and I realised that 
being too vulnerable up front is not a good thing because in-person chemistry is very different from texting chemistry. So you might end up creating this picture of who this other person is before even meeting them. And that's dangerous territory, guys, don't go there. Because if you meet in person and the vibe is off or you just realize over time that they're just not for you, then a couple dates in, you end things and you go breaking the heart of that poor soul who just bared all of his heart to you within the first month of meeting them. Or worst case is that they do that to you, right? They reject you and you end up feeling like you gave so much of yourself to this person that you didn't even really know. This is also why it's so important to meet people as soon as possible so you don't prolong these conversations over texts that might never go anywhere in person. Also, we know the incompatibilities early. Like if you guys are on the apps for different reasons, if there are any major deal breakers like religion, then say goodbye sooner rather than later, no matter how much potential there seems to be. Always assume that they are seeing other people unless they've told you explicitly that they aren't or you both have had a conversation on exclusivity. It is completely possible to meet a perfectly nice person who you are just not interested to date or to go into a long-term relationship with. There doesn't always have to be a very super solid, concrete reason why. And unfortunately, that goes both ways, <laughs> right? Someone can say the exact same thing to you. Honestly, this made me feel a little bit jaded about the process of meeting people because I did meet many perfectly nice guys who I would just saw nothing long-term with. Uh, and it made me question whether I was too picky or, you know, if there was something wrong with me rather than them. But whenever I met, you know, the people I ended up being partnered with, I realized that there was nothing broken with me. It's just how things are sometimes. Ultimately, I think it's important to trust your gut um, and, you know, some general rules of thumb as well that helped me decide whether to keep seeing people is how do I feel at the end of the day? Do I feel energetically drained? Um, could I see myself on at least a couple more dates with this person? Does the conversation flow? Is it easy with this other person? If you feel like it's been a while and you're still not really getting what you want, then take a break. <laughs> okay, I'm going to end off this very, very long video with this. Sometimes it feels like you're never going to find someone, but all it takes is one person for it to make all of the waiting worth it. So keep holding on to hope. Keep living your best single life and keep putting your best foot forward in all the other aspects of your life. As long as you keep being yourself and keep being open to new connections, I know that someone who's right for you will come along no matter what medium it may be. So with that, thank you so much for staying till the end and I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you guys in my next video coming real soon. Bye.